Welcome to the Afrocentric Woman, where our mission is to inspire Black women to heal core wounds and embrace a luxurious and abundant lifestyle. Thank you for joining me. Let's talk, sis. I'm going to call this part two. Hey, y'all. I'm going to call this part two of my last dusty uh, video. So this is part two because I realized I left out an important aspect of the story. So with that, <laughs> with that dusty he had three baby mamas can you believe it three baby mamas three children with three different women and uh did i know yeah i think i knew that early on i think i did um i think i did and again i mean i was like i i oof i'm not trying to sign up to be anybody's fourth baby mama but I, I wasn't taking him super serious so I kind of look past it but you know in retrospect that wasn't smart you know you don't want to play with fire you don't want to play with fire and accidentally get burned I mean it was probably too far gone of a situation to even have to be like for fun and companionship so because now I may have a guy that I'm dating for fun for companionship you know but he's not dusty though you know like just because you're with somebody and you don't take them serious doesn't mean you have to go out and get the dustiest male available well they're always available um but just any dusty that you just find or that finds you and hunts you down so let me tell you he wasn't he was not a good father and uh that was all the more reason why i did not want to link myself to this person long term um, he had a lot of lies and excuses when I would ask about his participation, his participation with his children and involvement with their life. He had just a lot of excuses. The mom, this, and, you know, or I don't, I can't travel. And I'm like, well, if you can't travel to see them, why don't you just call them every day? You know, why don't you call and ask about their homework, ask how their day was? Like, why aren't you calling your children every day? Because I know there will be times where I might see him for a stretch of, two or three days and he never picked up the phone to call his children he's like well I'll text my son or we'll play video games I said it's not the same you know texting him or y'all playing video games and he's you know I guess logged on to the video games this is something that I don't understand because I don't play video games but I guess once you put the headset on you can like be talking to people while playing the video games I said that's not the same that's just like a home a friend which is great to be friends with your children but you also need to have that parental role you know talk to him about his homework about how he's coping with school and navigating everything as that as that you know pertains to school and you know talking to him just talking to him every day you know and who even knew if that was happening you know because he was probably lying about that too because I never saw him playing video games talking to his son so if I'm seeing you for a stretch of two or three days or four days and you haven't picked up the phone to have a conversation with your son like you are not being an active involved parent so um let me tell you about a specific incident that happened so was this the time that he got his car i think this was after the car yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so he had the car and um, he hadn't seen the smallest child. So I think he was the close with the youngest child. And he hadn't seen that child in a really long time. That child lived in a city, in a, in a city about, I would say about four and a half to five hours from our city in another major city. So he had not seen this young man, this, the, his baby boy, for, I don't know, a really, really long time, at least six months. Um... And I would, and I was asking him about it, you know, well, why don't you have the mother, you know, bring him out here, pay for her gas or pay for her transportation to get here so she could bring the child. And, you know, I'm just talking, he's just, you know, making up excuses, just just dusty excuses about why he has not made his way to see his son. So um, he gets the car. He has, like I said, he had a little change on him. He had some money. So I'm like, if you can go trick off on females and you can go and you can, um, are you guys coming? If you can trick off on females, then you can 
spend money on your child, you know? So he told his child that he was going to see him and take him to, I think, Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. And he was going to go out there. And I was like, okay, great. Well, how long are you going to be there? He said, well, he was going to go there, spend time and turn right back around and come. And I'm like, why would you drive five hours just to spend a couple hours and turn right back around? Why don't you make a whole weekend out of it? You know, take him somewhere, you know, y'all spend the night and then... And then you take them to breakfast and to do another activity and come back the next day. You know, you could go Friday through Sunday or you could at least do Saturday, come back Sunday evening. He was like, well, no hotel and this and this and that. And I don't want to pay for a hotel, so I'm just going to come back. Okay, fine. Well, just go ahead and go. So on that day that he was going to leave, it was raining. It was raining that day. And when I talked to him, I was like, hey, are you on your way to such and such city to go see your son? And he said, oh, yeah, I'm not going. It's because it's raining. I lost it. I lost it. I said, listen here, m and Effer. You didn't told this little boy that you're coming out there and that he has been looking forward to you taking him to Chuck E. Cheese. I don't give a F if it's raining, if it's a tornado, if it's a tsunami, if it's an earthquake, if you got to walk to this city, if you got to take a bus, a plane, a train, I don't care what you need to do, but you will not break this little boy's heart. You won't. I said, and if you do, I said, don't ever call my m and line. Don't ever call my number. You are, tra you, will, I, you will be dead to me. You will be dead to me. I swear to God. Like, I went off on him. He was like, okay, I'll go ahead and go. I said, yeah, you better. You better. Or else you don't know what's coming to you. I mean, I went off, like, the nerve of this dude to sit up here and tell this little baby that he's coming to take him to Chuck E. Cheese, and he being lazy, he being lazy, sitting up, talking about, oh, it's raining, I'm not going to go. <laughs> the F? Yes, you are. Not on my watch. On my watch, you will not be trash, a trash father. You won't do it. I will nag you and bother you and make you be involved with your children. But it's sad. I mean, but that really, like, it speaks to his character. It speaks to his character. I shouldn't have to strong arm you to see your children. I shouldn't have to force you to be a father. You should be doing that on your own. I can support you, my man, my future man, I support you in being a father, but I will not force or strong arm you into being a father. But yeah, that was something that happened towards the end of our relationship. I don't even know if I want to call it a relationship. I call it a connection. <laughs> Situationship, a connection. That was towards the end of us dealing with one another. Uh, of me tolerating his foolishness was that situation with his son. And it left such a bad taste in my mouth. Um, you know, I am glad that he went ahead and went out there to spend time with his son. But the what I had to do to get him to keep his promise was just astronomical and something as simple as driving out and spending time with your child shreezy something that you're looking forward to but these dusties are so self-centered they're so selfish and lazy they don't take responsibility for their actions um they don't they don't they're not accountable for what they do they blame everybody it's the mama fault i don't have this i don't have that you know the world is against me or you know, there's any number of excuses that you can come up with to, to fail in life, to not step up as a man and a father. They have every excuse in the book as to why they are failing in life. Every excuse in the book, you know, and with the oldest uh, daughter, the that, you know, the mom had remarried or was engaged or, you know, about to be in another relationship. And I think the little girl didn't even want his last name anymore. So, you know, me hearing through the grapevine uh, that she wanted, you know, to she wanted her stepdad's name so that her, her mom and the and the her, her mom and the stepdad could all have the same name. And he was just going off about how upset he was about that and, you know, how it wasn't right. And the mom is manipulating the girl and this and that. And I said, well, you know, you don't spend time with this child. You don't call her. You don't, you don't, you know, you're not a part of her life. And he's like, well, when I call, she has an attitude. I said, she has an attitude because you're inconsistent. I said, listen, 
if you want to be in your daughter's life, let me give you the blueprint. You know, let me give you the blueprint of how to make this work. I said, you're going to have to overcome her anger because you've disappointed her so many times. You've disappointed her. You've broke her heart. You know, you're her daddy. You're supposed to be... You're supposed to be the man who loves her unconditionally, but you love everything above her. You put your own comfort above hers. You put your own self-centeredness above her. You basically send the message that she don't mean nothing to you. So yeah, she's going to have a stink attitude with you on the phone, or she's going to be quiet. She's going to keep it short. And that's why you have to just own that. He didn't want to. He didn't want to know because it's more convenient his narrative of oh the mother's manipulating her she don't even want my last name so i don't have to be her father you know that type of bullshit um yeah he's just a trash he's just a trash individual with really poor character um a trash father a piss poor example of a man just a male underdeveloped male with nothing to offer the world but d and that's sad like it's just sad that so many dusty males have just accepted that I don't have anything to offer the world but D. That's all I have. I'm, I'm nothing of value. I have no good ideas. I, I'm not a provider. I'm not a support system. I'm not consistent in my children's life and the women and children of my life. You know, I don't, I'm not innovating anything. I'm not providing resources to a worthy, worthy source. You know, I'm not a family man. I'm not building up my family. I'm not building a home. I'm not creating anything. I'm not making anything happen. All I'm doing is just providing D. That's sad. That's so sad. You know, gosh, it's just a sad state of affairs. And it's just it's so many, Im I feel like there's so, many, so much imagery and um, this whole Mandingo thing. And there's just so many, there's so many tropes and, and, and media spins and you know, jokes and, and innuendos that support this idea that all black men have to offer, like they're bucks. All black men have to offer the world is D. That's it. And that's enough. And with good D, you can just get by because you can just go, go to this woman, give her good D, and then you can hop over to the next woman, give her good D, and then you just live off of women. And, all, and the only thing you provide to the household is D. That's it. That's so sad. And the, the sad part about it is having three baby mamas, right? Or more. Because you're, you're irresponsible with your D. You're irresponsible with your D. So you end up leaving these children. And these children are ill-equipped to uh, handle the world. They don't have a father figure because you haven't developed yourself. All you have is D. That's it. So sad. So sad. So, um, yeah, I, I just left that really important aspect out um, of the story originally. And then, let me see. I can't think of anything else that I wanted to add to the story. I felt like there was something that I wanted to add as far as my own self-reflection and just looking at. Oh, I mean, just, I know, I think I remember. I was just thinking, you know, for the millisecond that I kind of liked him, I think it was probably more hormonal and just loneliness and I don't know I don't really think it's like an authentic like like an authentic appreciation but when I was like caught up in the the, the cocktail of hormones and bonding and I was actually looking and considering him I was just thinking to myself I had to ask myself this question do I want to be a fourth baby mama do I want to be this guy's fourth baby mama and another question I had to ask myself is, if he's a trash father to these children who are already here, what kind of father would he be to my children, to the children that we have together? And I'm someone who I, I like to base my opinion on facts and I like to base my opinion on trends. So you trending towards being a trash father, you know, that's, that's, you know, where the, the road you're headed down. So what makes me, I'm not delusional. What makes me so special? What makes me so different? Why would you treat these women horribly? And then all of a sudden have some type of epiphany and treat me, you know, so great. Or why would you, 
um, you know, abandon these three children and make up a bunch of excuses and reasons why you're not participating and supporting them. And, and keep in mind, y'all, throughout this entire video, or whenever I was referring to the children, I was never talking about finances. Did you notice that? And that's for a reason. I never, when he didn't have a job, I never was like, oh, I knew he was behind on his child support. Because I told y'all I had ran a background check on him. So I already knew that he was behind on his child support. So that wasn't, you know, that wasn't the issue. My issue is calling, being around, being involved, showing uh, interest in the children. And he couldn't even do that. So I don't understand, like, why males want to huff and puff and underdeveloped males want to huff and puff and pout about child support. When child support and being in your children's lives are two totally separate. Well, they're not totally separate, but you can do you can be in your child's life even if you don't have the finances to contribute to their life. You should be doing everything possible to get the finances to tr contribute to their life. But in the meantime, between time, while you're working on that, you should be actively involved in their life, you know conferencing in to to to, to uh, conference to school if you don't live in the same state you could always video chat so that you could be involved with what's going on at the school you know checking their homework getting on video chat checking their homework seeing if they have any questions trying to send them resources and supporting them asking them asking them about how their day was and what they're going through you know bringing up relevant topics based off of where they are uh, in their development it's so sad that these males, you know, they're just not there. And I mean, I guess we can do a whole other video about why they're crappy parents or why they choose not to parent their children. I have my theories, but we could talk about that in a different video. But, um, but yeah, those are some critical questions that I had to ask myself. You know, do I really want to be somebody's fourth baby mama? And, you know, being a good father is a quality that I, I admire and value and require for a man in my life who is a father or aspires to be a father and he didn't have that quality he was your typical excuse making dusty you know and so um after at um evalu evaluating all of that i realized i had i had to stop playing with fire and it just wasn't worth it um when you're dealing with wealthy men versus dusty men some of the issues overlap because males are males so I kind of figured hey if I deal with some of the uh, uh what would you call them challenges and um intricacies <laughs> I don't know <laughs> of you know, interfacing with, with, with men, I, I'm just going to go wealthy. I'm I'm not going to just, I'm not going to roll around in the dust. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be annoyed. I'm going to be paid while I give it out while I'm annoyed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All right, my loves, thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace and love. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with the Afrocentric woman. Special gratitude to our subscribers. If you'd like to stay connected with this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you like this content, please hit the like button. If you have any comments or thoughts about the content shared, please drop down into the comment section and let us know. Remember, you are worthy, you are enough, you are unique, and you are lovable. And I appreciate you.